Cutwater 28 Fit and Finish Interior. Hello, welcome back to our review of the Cutwater 28. This video is the fit and finish of the interior in our Cutwater series, where we look at the interior and some of the new boat challenges we faced, and you may encounter yourself. Bottom line, in my experience, a new boat has always required shaking out issues, and the more complex, the more shaking out required. The next video in this segment is a series that will discuss the functionality of the C28, followed by our last video, which will cover our experience with the performance of Bullion C. If you wish to skip the balance of the intro content, click the hyperlink below that reads, Begin Review. Now that the weather is slowly improving in the Pacific Northwest, we are looking forward to the return of boating season. That's not to say we did not enjoy our boat during the winter months. It's quite comfortable in the dismal conditions of winter, a true all-season boat. But it does get a little lonely when you're the only boat in the moorage and quite often on the lake. We do enjoy boating the waterways around the San Juan Islands and other coastal waterways, but the pandemic risks and stay safe mandates made it undesirable to travel, even when it was permissible. So Bullion Sea has remained on the Lake Murren for well over a year now. I suppose that it's a good time to point out that the extended range of the C-28 makes Bullion Sea perfect for use on the lake, where fueling on the water is illegal and getting caught assures a violator of a hefty fine. Her extended range, especially at trawling speeds, has made it possible to enjoy the lake for over a year and a half without the need for refueling, while still leaving a 50% fuel reserve in her tank. If you're wondering how we dispose of our waste accumulated in our holding tank while spending such a significant amount of time on the lake, a portable waste pump is used to pump it out and transport it to an RV dump station. I've been using the waste caddy for nearly 15 years now. Please send me a note in the comment section if you'd like me to do a brief review of it. I do plan to post a short clip of our using the waste caddy on our new TikTok channel titled where we put up short clips of life on Bullion C. Before diving into this video, it's time for my usual disclaimers, which are, I'm not a professional captain. The following video is my opinion based on our extensive experience with our Cutwater 28. We've logged over 300 hours of injured news in the first year alone, with time spent on the boat easily tripling that figure. My boating experience spans over 47 years with numerous boats of various configurations and sizes ranging up to 65 feet. And over the years, I have seen the good and bad of boating. That said, boating is a lifelong learning experience and accumulation of knowledge. So don't feel frustrated if your initiation into the boating life is a little bumpy. And finally, we've received no monetary compensation from the op broker or the manufacturer for the making of this video. So you can expect an honest review of our experience. I pointed out the cherry woodwork in previous videos and the warmth that it lends throughout the cutwater cabin versus the usual white gel coat bulkheads used in boats this size. As we make our way through the interior, beginning with the galley, imagine in your mind how the cabin would appear if the cherry veneer trim work were simply just white gel coat. This really drove home to me how the liberal use of cherry creates warmth throughout the cabin, and I will be emphasizing this throughout the video. The galley is a nice blend of traditional hardwoods, countertop appearing as a solid surface material and stainless steel appliances. Looking at the galley area, let's start with a countertop, which is an unusual feature. At first glance, the countertop appears to be a Corian product or a derivative, but it's not. It really is a molded gel coat product. Now there are some definite benefits from doing this, beginning with a product that looks beautiful and is produced at a fraction of the cost and weight of a poured miller or solid surface product. Keep it in mind that this is a gel coat finish. Look at the crisp, clean, and straight line that separates the mineral solid surface appearance from the white gel coat. The process of creating solid surface appearing or appearance in the gel coat is complex 
And quite frankly, I do not know how cut water does a, not such a nice job here. Because it is a molded product, the countertop rolls easily up to the backsplash without the need for a seam or caulking. It also precludes joints in the surface. There is a drawback that you need to be aware of with this unique process. If your countertop is built with a flaw or is damaged during use and requires repair, it is not possible to recreate the finish outside of the manufacturing mold. Matching the appearance is difficult, if even possible, and the repaired area cannot cure in the open area to the same hardness as the original surface hardened in the mold. Cutwater continues to use the surface in their galley, so if it's proven to be an issue, it must not be a significant one. Now the chamfered edge molding, which is probably a light maple with cherry inset, not only looks nice, but is held up well under extensive use. We cook meals in our galley on a regular basis, and this countertop and edge molding has seen many wipes with a wet cloth. The self-rimming sink is installed without visible caulking, and the stove and trim kits seat well into the molded surface. Note how offsetting the faucet to the side allows for installation of a larger sink while creating a nice effect. Cutwater cleverly designed the galley so that the countertop extends under the passenger seat, which can fold up and out of the way, thereby extending the usable counter or countertop space in the galley. We frequently fold the passenger seat up to increase our counter space when not in the way. I wish the underside were finished better than it is. The underside of the seat when folded up looks like, well, the underside of a seat. I think more care could be taken here to create a finished product. Above the countertop are cherry veneered shelves and cherry trim molding and a chrome retaining rail that we use to help keep our cups and glassware in place. Under the non-skid, which we added to prevent items from sliding, is also cherry veneer, another nice touch. The cherry panels are pre-cut and applied or laid into place throughout the boat and are done in such a manner that joints and gaps are minimal, but there are a few. Most of them are high and in areas where they are not prominent or conspicuous. I agree with Cutwater's choice to not caulk or fill them. Cherry will patina over time and at different rates, so creating a matching caulk or fill is impossible. The main window on the port side, which extends from the galley into the passenger alcove, is a quality marine window framed in metal with a deep brown high gloss finish. This offers a subdued contrast to the surrounding cherry. The same is true for the main window on the starboard side which extends from the dinette area into the helm station. These windows are constructed differently from the rest in the main compartment because they house large sliding glass panels which open by the helm and the passenger seats. The result is they are not trimmed by cherry molding like the other windows in the main compartment. Screens used to cover the sliding windows are held in place by Velcro lining the window frame. These screens are polymer material making them light and durable. The downside is that the message larger than traditional metal screens which can allow smaller bugs into the cabin. Cherry accent molding is used liberally throughout the cabin and is typically applied as a means of concealing places that would otherwise need to be caulked, as in the case of the molding around the windows. Toward the top of the bulkheads is where more joint seams may be seen. Now some of them are concealed behind cherry balance, which also partially obscures the tracking for the curtains. I was skeptical at first of the choice of traditional hanging fabric window coverings versus some of the lighter fabric Venetian blinds used in vessels of similar size. But after three years of heavy use, I'm sold. And here's why. The more baseline boats I have observed do not have side retention channels to keep them from swinging. When retention channels are installed, they lend a cluttered appearance on smaller boats with smaller windows. And they are one more complication to deal with when opening or closing a window. For a smaller trailerable cruiser like the C28, I like it simple and basic. In addition, a cruiser with an 8.5 foot beam tends to rock more when anchored or 
underway in heavier seas, and someone is more likely to falter and press their hand into the window to regain their balance. Traditional hanging fabric treatments are better suited to this abuse than the plastic or fabric horizontal Venetian blinds I observed on boats in similar size. The fabric weave of the curtain is not blackout density, but it does assure a reasonable amount of privacy. When not in use, they are captured by matching fabric bands which snap into place. Note that the galley side fabric drapes low into the food prep area. On occasions where food preparation was particularly messy, we have folded the curtain in onto itself to shorten its length, thereby protecting it from food contaminants. The remaining cabin windows are covered by white canvas which is held in place by snaps. They are comprised of the forward facing windows, the rear facing in the main compartment which are covered from the outside and one angular window on the port side shown here which is covered by a canvas from the inside. Looking below the countertop in the galley to your left and toward the stern of the boat is a stainless steel trimmed oven. I think these ovens look great against the cherry wood. The cabinet doors in the galley are in cherry veneer. The finger pulls are in light wood, probably a maple, with a cherry insert. There are a couple things about the doors I would change. I would prefer to see a concealed European style hinge as opposed to a barrel hinge. The door pulls do not have the finger pull routing so they are a bit awkward for larger hands to open. Door knobs or handles could be added but I feel they would detract from the clean appearance as well as create a snare hazard in a small area that is known to pitch and roll. A nice sized fridge with a stainless steel insert panel on the opposite end of the galley completes it. You probably know this but be certain not to use anything abrasive to clean it. Just opposite the refrigerator is a wine cooler made to match the stainless fridge and oven. It is recessed into a gel coat bulkhead that serves as the base of the dinette helm and seat. The wine cooler is trimmed in cherry molding to conceal the fiberglass cutout. Facing aft in the main cabin, the bulkhead between the main cabin and the cockpit offers significant viewing through a combination of windows and a large glass hatch. The theme of the brown metal framing and the cherry panel with trim moldings are continued here. The main entry hatch can be covered from the inside by a white canvas for privacy. This is held in place by industrial velcro lining the circumference of the hatch frame. There is also a screen that can be applied from the inside when desired to help keep out bugs. Facing starboard, the bulkhead window trim and coverings are similar to the port side with variations due to design only. The dinette seating uses quality marine vinyl, stitch and contrasting panels, and vinyl stitch piping. Note that the anti-slide fabric used in the cockpit is not used here, and this is to allow easy access to the inner areas of the seating. The dinette table is cherry veneer with perhaps a maple chamfered edge and contrasting cherry inlay, matching the cockpit and the forward V-berth tables. Recessed stainless steel hinges allow the panel to fold over, allowing access to sturdy grab handles and cup holders for when you're underway and in rocky seas. Note how the underside of the table leaf is finished to match. As a side note, we personally do not use this feature very often, and I'm curious if there are any C20 owners out there that do. Now the dinette lowers to make a sleeping area, which will be shown in our function video. Underneath the dinette is teak veneer flooring recessed into a molded fitted pan and gel coat finished surfaces, giving a nice professional finished look without caulking or trim pieces required. The helm station seating services the helm and the dinette area by means of a clever hinge system, which we will demonstrate the seating and sleeping configurations for these areas in our function video. Controls are mounted in a black textured vinyl padded cover surface. Now I personally would have preferred a rough textured fiberglass, but it has held up well and is arguably easier to add more instruments or to change altogether. I like the stainless spoked wheel or battleship wheel with high glass wood veneer finish. Just after the U-shaped throttle, 
gear selector, which looks good and feels great in the hand when operating the boat, are two brushed aluminum cup holders, a must for a lengthy cruise. A teak footrest, stainless steel collapsible step, and vertical grab bar round out the helm station. Across from the helm station is the passenger alcove, done in gel coat, cherry, and a vinyl dash area to match the helm. Gel, gel coat surface is used for stepping, have non-skid. There is a convenient storage area with a smoked plexiglass hatch for access. We stow small charts, a relatively large spotlight, field glasses, backup VHF radio, and more here. There's one brushed aluminum cup holder for the passenger and a vertical stainless steel grab rail, which is opposite the entrance to below decks from the helm grab rail. They are the same height and size. Looking at the overhead in the main cabin, we see that Cutwater continues the cherry trim on bulkheads up to the overhead. The primary surface on the overhead is a textured marine vinyl. The overhead is padded, adding depth and safety, and a means of concealment for mounting plates and hardware that are used to secure various equipment and hardware on the exterior of the boat. Cherry accent moldings are present here as well, along with recessed aircraft style light or LED lighting. These lights are bright and provide excellent illumination. Having the ability to dim them would be nice when the effect is desirable. The white trim hatches with smoke glass set nicely into the padded overhead, though I wish a different screen system were employed. Perhaps screens that retract back would be appropriate. The current screens sag, which looks unsightly and creates opportunity for bugs to enter the cabin. I flipped the screens over to counter the sag but then there's no grabbing tab to pull or remove them, and the screen piping is visible. For the most part, the screens work, but there are better of options available out there. As far as the fit, we are chasing a leak that we believe is from the overhead hatches. This is because we discovered that all the portholes were installed with inadequate caulking and seal. They were removed and reset under warranty, which seems to have remedied the problem. At the time we discovered the porthole leaks, we were not aware that the hatches were leaking. I'm guessing that perhaps the same individual who installed our portholes also installed our overhead hatches, and an insufficient amount of sealer was applied in this instance as well. We will be removing and inspecting the hatches ourselves this summer. Now the deck in the main compartment is where cut water really shines. It consists of a solid mold, except for the access hatch below the entry hatch door into the compartment. Recessed into the deck are shallow pans which accept teak veneer panels. These are secured by a strong adhesive caulking. So what does all that gibberish mean for you? Well it translates into a great looking compartment deck that is free of squeaks. I've been on multi-million dollar yachts that have had more floor squeak than the cabin in here. The mid-berth is located under the dinette area. A molded hatch entrance located beneath the dinette seat allows access to the mid-berth. A white canvas piece snaps over the opening as seen here, which conceals item quickly tossed below to tidy up for unexpected guests at a raft up or for privacy when someone is sleeping below. Full access is achieved by lifting the hinge dinette seat. Raising the dinette seats creates a large entrance to a tight area on the boat. I've had boats of similar size, especially express cruisers, that offered small access openings to the mid-berth, so I really appreciate the open access. Lifting the seat is assisted by a gas-charged lift ram. Once lifted, the seat is held in place by the same ram, and it rests against the table. You may see a pressure dent in the seat cushion when lowered. This will disappear. When the seat is raised and you glance downward, the first thing you see is a nice teak veneer step and floor. The top step is padded and upholstered in a nice fabric, creating a comfortable seat to sit on when viewing the system panels. System panels and switches are mounted to the bulkhead against a cherry veneer panel. There's still room to add more without cramming things together if needed. The underside of the hinged dinette hatch and all of the walls and ceiling of the mid-berth 
are covered in a finish fabric that I have dubbed rat fur. If you're a boater yourself, I am certain you are familiar with it. I do not understand why the boating industry persists in installing this undesirable product. It looks nice to begin with, but it's port resisting dirt, dust, stains, especially water, and care must be taken when cleaning it to avoid scarring or chafing the fabric. In fact, gnats were stuck to the fabric at the time we made this video. Should the fabric become chafed, shaving it with a fabric razor does help. Call me crazy, but I think only fabrics that are resistant to water damage should be used on a boat, since the water stain from our leak will be difficult to remove. It could be that the industry believes this material concedes, or conceals fabric joints better as in the case of access panels cut into the bulkheads in the mid-berth area. But I personally do not believe it does any better than a marine vinyl. There are several angled components and cut in access panels in the mid-berth area. And cut water does as good a job at covering them with the chosen fabric product as any other manufacturer I've seen. I'm not certain why Cutwater chose to use a porthole with a black finish here, perhaps to save cost. Because this isn't a less prominent area in the boat visually, I'm okay with it. A foam mattress and fabric matching the fabric in the V-berth area rounds out this area. Nothing much to say here except the stitching is heavy duty and professional. Below the main deck in the forward compartment is a breakfast area a small dinette which converts into a sleeping berth and the head. The head compartment is molded fiberglass with gel coat finish and the breakfast, dinette and sleeping berth area are molded fiberglass with gel coat finish also and other surface finishes such as marine vinyl, cherry veneer and fabric covered surfaces. Now standing in the main compartment and looking down you're greeted visually with teak veneer steps. I had a boat in the past that concealed a wastebasket in the steps, and this would be a nice touch for cut water. The dinette step is teak, and the deck is teak veneer set into molded gel coat. The larger deck sole is comprised of two abutted teak veneer panels, though the seam is difficult to make out in the video. This is necessary for access to systems below, such as a shower, a shower sump and the through hull transducer. Unfortunately, there is some deck squeak as a result, especially when a larger person like myself treads upon it. Beginning on the port side and sweeping forward to starboard, we face the optional breakfast area. The standard option is a sitting area, not featured in this video. The breakfast area is done in cherry veneer and lighter wood accents. I think Cutwater does a stellar job here nicely fitting the wood pieces around shelving, wine cubbies, a stainless sink and chrome faucet, stainless and black trim microwave, a Keurig, and a stainless cup holder. Personal note here, I managed to avoid the Keurig craze until trying one in the cut water and now we have replaced nearly all of our traditional coffee makers with them. The one cabinet door in the breakfast area covers a large storage space and it matches those in the galley. It has the same issues I noted for the doors in the galley. Below the cabinetry is a deep re recess which offers additional storage. We place everything from shoes to our charger for our outboard here. To the left of the breakfast area is a nice sized hanging locker where we place garments and the table for the cockpit when not in use. There's even room for items such as large bottled beverages on the bottom of the locker beneath the garments and to the left where there is a recessed area. Above the hanging locker is a 12 volt TV with DVD fixed to a wood mount that is finished on one side. The rough finished side is only visible when the TV is folded out for viewing in the main compartment. Sweeping to the right we have the port side of the dinette area which also serves as a portion of the V-berth the when it is set as a sleeping area. Boaters sit on a nice foam padded seat with an attractive fabric. The backrest is done in a matching marine vinyl color chosen to complement the fabric cushion with a stitch center seam that bisects the backrest. This effectively creates two panels 
which presents a more finished look. The shelf and bulkhead behind the backrest are finished in gel coat. The shelf is recessed below the back of the backrest, creating a rail to help hold items in place. As you can see, there is a lot of storage here. The side bulkhead in the storage area has two portholes and white trim, each fitted with a removable screen. Above the shelf area on the port side, there is a horizontal marine vinyl covered panel that connects the bottom of the upper bulkhead to the top of the shelf bulkhead, as you see here. This is repeated for the starboard side and forward too. Now the bulkhead dividing the breakfast and port dinette slash v-berth area is in cherry veneer with maple molding accents. Note that toward the overhead, a protrusion extends from the port bulkhead outward. Now this provides a sense of visual separation between the breakfast area and the dinette or v-berth area. Another nice touch by Cutwater Designers, which shows their attention to detail. This division is even more apparent when the privacy curtain is drawn. As we pan through the V-berth slash dinette area, you will note that Cutwater uses either gel coat surface or marine vinyl to finish the bulkheads and the overhead. The marine vinyl is far superior in appearance to the rat fur fabric used in the mid-berth compartment, in my opinion. Below the seating, port, forward, and starboard, are large storage wells that are finished gel coat and separate from the hole. Now this allows you to store items that are fabric, if you choose, without the worry of them smelling like the bilge or being contaminated by water or dirt. Another nice touch. Looking forward now, the shelf is replaced by a lightly padded marine covered bulkhead. A mirror adds depth to the space and on either side of the mirror are 12 volt lighting fixtures. Each fixture has a lamp feature and opposite the lamp feature is a small LED light that when turned on by itself acts as either accent lighting or a reading lamp when the lamp is inverted. The seating, backrest, and storage theme below remains the same as the port side, as does the area above the mirror and lights. The starboard side is similar to the port. The most notable difference is the large cherry bulkhead which also serves as one side of the head compartment. The cherry continues around the corner and forms the bulkhead for the entrance hatch to the head and then on to the last bulkhead below decks. Again, a significant amount of cherry wood is used in this area. The privacy curtain fabric matches the port and starboard window coverings in the main compartment. It is comprised of two halves that are secured on each side and can be zipped together in the middle. Velcro secures the sides when drawn. When set as a dinette, the small table matches the theme in the cockpit and main compartment and is just big enough for two people to play a game or perhaps eat a meal. The dinette table can be lowered to form the V-berth. The cushion used to form the V-berth are large and cumbersome, so we've chosen to store them forward, eliminating the third seating position forward. Because this area is suited only for small adults or children, and there is a larger dinette in the main compartment, we opted to store the V-berth cushions here. This table makes a nice small table for children, allowing for the adults to be seated separately when entertaining. Now the overhead is done in the same fashion as the main compartment, with the same trim items, lighting, hatches, and screens. Now last but not least in our tour is the head which of course, in a boat this size, is a wet head. The entry latch, or hatch, is large with a chrome latch. The screws that hold the assembly together are short for a latch that arguably receives the most use on the boat, and we have had to apply blue Loctite to the screws after they worked themselves loose and fell out. Now standing the head and looking toward the entry hatch, you see that the hatch is also done in cherry veneer, and that the abutting bulkheads on either side are also done in cherry veneer. Now for the last time, I promise, this cherry in the boat is amazing. A draw curtain is provided to cover the hatch when showering, which is held captive in loops and snapped in place to one side when not in use. The remaining bulkheads and overhead are smooth gel coat which make easy for cleanup after showering. 
cleanup is a few swipes with a squeegee and then a quick wipe of the fixtures with a towel. The base below the vacuum flush toilet and macerator is also smooth gel coat for ease of cleaning. And the shower pan is textured fiberglass. And because we're either barefoot or in our socks on the boat, we cut a soft tub bath mat to fit and leave it in the head except when showering. Light sources are from a recessed aircraft style light and or a large white opaque skylight overhead. Located on the bulkhead behind the toilet and seek pedestal up high is a porthole for ventilation. Because of the location of this porthole in the exterior, it is a natural funnel for rainwater, meaning that it cannot be opened if there is rain of any consequence. I wish Cutwater thought to include an exhaust fan in the head along with the porthole. Below the bulkhead and porthole, there is a large shelf with stainless rail for securing items. As you can see, there is room for a lot of items on the shelf. Below the shelf is a large cabinet door with sizable storage behind it. The door is the same style used throughout the boat, except that it uses a concealed hinge. I think this looks much cleaner than the barrel style hinges used in the galley and the breakfast area. Like the galley and breakfast area, the door lacks finger pull routing, but because there are no adjacent obstacles, it is easier to imagine or manage grabbing hold of to open. The outlet is a durable exterior metal fixture. This not only looks good, but will hold up better than the plastic equivalents that will no doubt be knocked and bumped in a smaller enclosure such as this one. The light switch has a nice looking stainless plate. The sink area is well thought out. Because it is small, Cutwater chose to use a vessel sink. Hey, what do you know? A pun! Uh, anyway, to further enhance the look, the vessel sink sits on a shelf about three or so inches below the backsplash area, making the, backs the backsplash area easier to reach and creating a visually pleasing effect. Below the counter is a stainless grab well for safety, a waterproof flush actuator button, and a toilet paper routing or housing designed to protect your roll from the water. Facing forward is a door matching the other, which allows access to generous storage space below the sink. Moving to the last bulkhead to be discussed, it is the final bulkhead of the fiberglass enclosure. Toward the upper portion is a mirror, which cleverly conceals hinges and should allow it to swing open to access an electrical fuse panel. A strong tension latch holds the mirror closed. There is a ledge inside wide enough to hold spare toilet paper rolls, which we have found convenient. Now where the fiberglass enclosure shower pan meet the wood paneling, there is a bead of white caulking. Now, Cutwater did a great job of caulking our boat, but note should be taken to inspect these areas regularly. Well. That wraps up our video of the interior fit and finish of our Cutwater C28. And if the weather holds out there in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, we should be filming our next video in the series over the Memorial Day weekend. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Comments are always welcome and appreciated. I hope you will return for future reviews. Click the notification button if you wish to be notified of their release. Thank you for watching.